Good Lord. <laughs> we have a very special guest live with us right now, Gail King. And she just said good Lord because she's talking about Krispy Kreme donuts. Because I was donuts. talking about Krispy Kreme donuts. donuts. I just said, you know, I should have just had one, but of course I had to have two. It's like a bag of chips. I'd you can't to, just no, have one. No, you yeah. absolutely can't. It was funny when we walked in and you guys were teasing and they said, we have a very special guest. I'm like, who's coming? <laughs> who's coming? Stop. Who's coming? Who else is coming? Gail King. Who else is coming? No, it's, it's so good to see you guys in the flesh. It's good to see you yes. and good to have you here, too. Yeah. It's been a, a while, two years mm -hmm. uh, because of the pandemic. It's been a crazy two years. Flesh. No, it was interesting, TV viewers of, of CBS, because Suzanne said, we are COVID tested, we've never had it, and we are COVID tested and boosted. I go, me too. I know. Never it's had it, COVID tested and boosted, but yet I'm still afraid. I know. Of course. No, it's no, like you just afraid. wave. And, and every time I take the now. test, I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, please, yeah. please, please. Yeah, so we're lucky. But I'm glad to be here, guys. Well, it's good to really have you glad to well. be here. Uh, you're here to talk about a very uh, CBS yes. uh, news special here about Trayvon Martin. It's hard to believe that he would have been 27 Seven, years I old. Know, DeMarco. You got a chance to talk to his mom. You spent some time with his mom over the years, Sabrina Fulton. Mm -hmm. What's it been like, and, and how is she doing, first and foremost? Well, I mean, listen, you you know, it's 10 years to us, but imagine what it's like for this woman. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Imagine, she says, you know, on some days it seems like yesterday, on other days it just seems like very far away, but there's not a day that goes by that she doesn't think about yeah. him, that she doesn't miss him. And she just really wanted, pe you know, to us, for so many people, he's a hashtag Trayvon Martin, the boy in the hoodie, but that was her son. Mm -hmm. She wants people to know he was deeply loved and deeply missed. And, you know, it has certainly led to some change. And we actually have a clip from the, uh, the special. Oh, good. Let's okay. Let's look at it. Let's look at that first. I have to say, every time I look at that, it's now an iconic photo of him in his hoodie. I see your face. I see you when I look at him. What do you see when you look at him? I see, at times, pain. I see, I still see Trey. I still see my baby boy. But it, there is something to smile about, you know? I'm grateful that I did have him for 17 years. But the pain and hurt and bitterness of him not still being here is something that I carry with me every day. And it's still amazing that she can still sit up and have a conversation I without know, breaking down after what happened. But this was a turning point for many Americans in how they view uh, African American boys and young men. Who That's were exactly killed. right. Yeah. I mean, on the day that we did that in Miami, it just happened to be his actual birthday. His mm -hmm. 27th birthday happened to fall on that day. And she's had this march, you know, every year since his death. And so she said when she first pulled up, she literally couldn't get out of the car. She wow. just had to take a second because she started thinking 27. He would have graduated from college. Mm -hmm. He would have had his own job by now. Who knows the career path that he wanted? She said he always liked planes. Who knows what that would have been like for him? So she has to take all that in for a second. But I look at Sabrina Fulton, who never intended to be a public speaker. Right. You know, she never intended to be the leader of a movement. You know, this was a, you know, a government worker mm -hmm. who had never had a public speech. And then, you know, as so many do, unfortunately, when this happens to you, God forbid, um, she turned her pain into purpose. And now, you know, she has formed this organization called Mothers of the Movement, where she reaches out and helps other mothers who have been through this. And mm -hmm. so it has been a very healing thing for her and helping other people, but it's still, let's not misunderstand the pain. You know, and 10 years later, it was, you know, it was, he was very instrumental in the beginning of the Black Lives Matter movement. It really started for many people with the death, the murder of Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. And she never expected this to be a movement either. But 10 years later, we are still talking about him. We are still remembering him, and that's a good thing. And Gail, we're both mothers of sons, and yes. he was killed days after his 17th birthday. Yep. You said she never intended to become the mother of a movement, but does she, do you see that she's finding purpose and continuing his life and legacy? I would, I would think she is because, you know, we were talking about the recent verdicts in the Ahmaud Arbery case and George Floyd's case. You know, that uh, in those two cases, people have been held accountable. So that does give her some um, hope. That does, you know, I, I think, I was trying to think, is hope the right word? She feels proud about that. Mm -hmm. But she also says that it's bittersweet because you take two steps forward and then it's two steps back because there are still people who have not been held accountable. Yes. In I'm, many cases, you know, Breonna Taylor's case is mm -hmm. certainly a good example. And her, uh, Tamika Palmer was there, Breonna's mother, who said, you know, in her daughter's case, it has not been held accountable. And there's still too many people they believe in the justice system that think that they can get away with this. And until people are held accountable, uh, 
that to them is not real change. Well, are they months? grateful for what has happened? Yes. yes. Yeah. And, and even Trayvon in his Stewart's case. Just one of the many ones that was able to make it to the national spotlight. But you think about this, you know, the many lives that mm -hmm. don't get a chance to make it on the news, the evening news, yep. and, and those stories that have just gone. And they also the said, what, what were you going to say, Suzanne? Um, in his case, George yeah. Zimmerman, you know, yes. acquitted yeah. because yes. of, you know, stand your ground laws mm -hmm. when he was a teenager in a gated community. That's, that's in a gated why community. I'm sure she doesn't feel Remember guys justice. at the time, I remember that case so vividly, CBS, I'm very proud to say was the very first network that did a national story on it. Mm -hmm. But George Zimmerman was told, stand back, hold back. Mm -hmm. We don't need you to intervene, sir. We have this, you know, because he made the 911 call and he still intervened anyway. Yeah. And when I asked her, uh, has she forgiven George Zimmerman? She didn't even, she didn't hesitate. She didn't stutter. She said, no, I have not. You know, because there are so many people, you hear of so many cases, and I marvel at them, honestly. Who, who have lost a loved one to senseless violence who say, but I forgive, but I forgive. And I, you know, I know we have to move on. She said, no, I have not. And to be honest with you, I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive. It's a process. And you think about it, I think there was a judge who just uh, threw out the case. I think he was suing, uh, George mm -hmm. Zimmerman mm -hmm. was suing mm -hmm. uh, the parents mm -hmm. of Trayvon Martin and they threw that case out, but it is a lot uh, you know, to take out. Yeah, especially when he didn't express remorse. No, so, no, he did not. You know, so no. how do you forgive? It's, it's yeah. very hard when no, you're mourning your son. No, he did not. I will thank you very much. I'm glad you're We're doing this. We're very proud of this special, yeah, you know, yeah. because right. I think it's important to remind people to take a step of what it was like then and where we are now. We talked to Eric Holder, who was the attorney general at the time. He mm -hmm. has some interesting things to say about the case. And remember, that was a time when uh, black men were putting on hoodies to say, oh, yeah. I am yeah. Trayvon Martin. Because it could have been point. any one of us. Yes. And, and remember President Obama, he caught a lot of slack because he said, you know, uh, yes. he saw himself. That could have been his son. Sabrina said something I thought was very powerful. She said, it wasn't the hoodie that got my son killed. It was the color of his skin. Yes. Oh. And I 100%. don't want anyone to misunderstand and miss that point. Or forget that. Yes, yes, All yes. Right. Can't wait it's, to see it's it. It's really good, guys, to see you in person. You too. You too. Thank you. And here again is the special. It's a CBS Reports Trayvon Martin 10 years later, and it will debut on the CBS News streaming network and the Smithsonian Channel tomorrow at 5 p.m. and on BET on Monday, February 28th, also at 5 p.m. Good to see you. DeMarco, can I say one more thing? Yes, ma'am, you can say whatever you want to <laughs> so say. So I will be doing CBS Mornings in L.A. from here. Oh, oh wow. nice. Today or yeah, for today a while? Or, today or for good? Officially? Just for today. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I was like, do we get to keep you? I was going to your house to eat. As much as I would like to be in L.A. for many reasons, <laughs> in order to do here and, and look this cute, because I don't look up this way. <laughs> You'd have to move your entire team here. I have here. hair and makeup. We started at 2 a.m. That's Ooh, a lot. Yes. I know you have to start earlier than that. I get it. So no, I'm heading back to New York, but we're here shooting something today. Oh, I can't I wait excited. to see. You know, well, right. Now we know it's why you had a couple you. Krispy Kremes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need that yeah. sugar rush in the morning at 2 a.m. Yeah, let's blame it on that. Yeah. <laughs> Good, to Good to see, see you, friend. Yeah. All right, you too. Thank you very much. Yeah.